Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the European Challenger. Challenger? Semi-finals. They're not challengers, that's for sure. They are professionals, and they could be going to All-Stars. Who will it be? Who knows? These two teams have fought down to the wire in this series, and now it's time for the third match, where the winner heads to the championship game, and the loser will fight for third place. Yeah, I think uh, this particular game is going to be so important. Picks and Bands is going to be a completely different story, as you've already touched on. The fact that Alliance are going to be losing a ban, I think we have to highlight Froggen. He was the Spring Split MVP. He went 9-1-6 and six playing Ziggs. And traditionally, when we see Ziggs versus Zed, you feel that Zed has the favorable matchup. And I think in most cases that would still ring true. But Froggen just timed his exhaust so incredibly well and really countered Xpeka's playstyle. There was three exhausts sitting on the side of Alliance. They used him incredibly well, and it's, it's a good ad adaptation to 4.5 in the summer spell changes. Yeah, I mean, he really has played fantastically well. There's a reason he got double MVP. There's a reason he got MVP for the season. Froggen has played very well. And actually, I had the pleasure of telling him while he was after, after beating the Copenhagen Wars, because he didn't realize until after they'd finished that game. He was like, oh, was I? Was that like a fact? Do I get anything for it? <laughs> <laughs> he gets a cookie and a pat on the you, back. <laughs> you get the admiration of the whole internet. Yes, that is, is definitely the case. And that's what these guys are playing for. Bragging rights, being the best in Europe. I mean, deciding game. I think if you contrast game one to game two, all of a sudden Alliance have much better objective control as well as buff control. We, you know, in the pregame video, they were talking about it. So Alliance got 10 towers. Um, Five dragons, two barons. They got 10 blues and 10 red buffs of their own. Tells you how long this game was running. Yeah. So if you compare some of the gold stats and how that objectives added up, at the end of the game, Alliance came away with like 85,000 gold to the 77,000 of Fnatic. In general, Alliance were marginally ahead for most of that game. So what do we make of Fnatic? What did they do now? They have... Wow, Sino looking down a bit <laughs> Cheer up, buddy. You still got it still 1-1. One, one. You're still in the semi-final. They had a great first game. The second game didn't go so well. Did they fall back to plan A, or did they have a plan C? So I don't think it was a picks and bans. I don't think it was a compositional-based uh, loss. I think it was objective control. In, during the course of the game, one dragon, one baron, six blues and six reds. That's the first time Fnatic has ever lost when they've secured a baron. But the reason I highlight that, they just didn't have enough objectives. They didn't get enough towers. They were trying to split push with Zed. They didn't get enough dragons. One out of seven is not good enough at this level of play. So if Fnatic can refocus their decision making and their objective control, I do think that composition could still have come out ahead. But because they didn't, that is probably one of the reasons why they lost. And they've, they've fell behind both times as well yep. with the tower push starts for Alliance. It has been fantastic. Before we get the teams underway, we're going to get into picks and bans in just a moment. We want you to tell us who you think will win this matchup. Get over to Twitter and use your hashtags. Fnatic win, which is FNC win. Hashtag FNC win. This is all at LOLC Esports, by the way. And hashtag all win. Easy, Fnatic win, all win. That's all we want to know. Tweet them at LOL Esports and we'll check in at the start of the game to see how your votes have turned out. Do it now! Yeah, do it now. There's a super cool feature. It's the first time we're doing this. So check it out, at FNC win, or hashtag uh, all win to see who you think's going to pick it up. I did think I Alliance thought, was going to be in the final. I thought you were going to give a prediction then. I am, oh. I am. I did think Alliance was going to be in the final, and I do believe that the way Alliance played in that game is going to give them a big amount of momentum coming into the deciding game. You can't discount the fact that Alliance are missing a ban, though. And this is very mm. important. So we need to see how this, this pick and ban phase plays out, because whatever Alliance grab in their first and second ban is going to be so crucial to helping them secure a win and advancing to the championship match. Well, that ban missed out will be, I believe, the first one. I think that's why they're not taking the ban. I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming that's where it falls in towards there. The uh, first ban for Fnatic, well, no surprise. Went straight to Aurelia again, taking that one away from Wicked. We talked about it yesterday, how good he's been playing throughout the season. He has such bigger stats on that champion compared to every other champion in his pool. For the record, most banned champion of the playoffs thus far. Six and six whenever Alliance are playing. And both of the best of threes that Alliance have taken part in have gone all the way to the deciding game. So, you know, once again, we'll see Wicked most likely on 
the likes of Ryze, maybe the likes of Renekton. It's going to be up, it's going to be available. I don't know if Fnatic are going to first pick it. Ziggs was taken away from Frog and caused too much terror for them in the last game. 9 1 4 he ended on, I believe, there. Soraka being banned out. They don't want to see Soaz terrorizing that top lane on it this time around. Uh, no, they're not. Now, the question is do they ban a jungler? Kha'Zix is available. Both of the games in this series, Kha'Zix has been first picked, so it is an option. Evelyn also been banned out both times by Fnatic. Let's see if they use it this time around. Yes, they do. There we go. So, sticking to that ban against Shook. They don't want to have Shook on that. Shook himself has incredible win percentages on Evelyn as a champion. That's where the big eight-game win streak they had, actually I think it was, yeah, it was eight-game win streak they had, was uh, picked up mainly down to Shook. And let's not forget, Nif was on Thresh for a big yes. period of that. Even more important than the winning streak, uh, Shook has won four out of five games Ooh. when playing Evelyn, and he's got a five KDA on that champion, which is great numbers. Knowing that Ryze is banned out, I think Alliance are hoping to get their hands on Renekton. Uh, at the pro-level play, there's a lot of talk how Ryze is a counter to Renekton and, and really gets in his face. So oh. by removing that, it's going to allow Alliance to pr grab that as a first pick if they want it. Well, it nearly has been banned out every game so far. That wow. loss of ban does mean it got through. Peke will be playing that one. Well, we'll see whether it is him. I'm expecting it to be. But Jax and Kha'Zix being locked in by Alliance. What a Fnatic going to do to counter this Jax? So this is a very interesting pickup because it's Alliance that have banned Jax in both of their previous games. I had actually been watching this under the impression that Wicked was either not comfortable or not wanting to play Jax in the top lane. So it's interesting to see him lock in, and that was a very quick lock in as well. The counter to it, if they're going to put this Lulu top, I think is a pretty smart option. When he jumps in uh, to leap strike you, you can glitter lance him, you can turn him into a munchkin with that whimsy, and you can get away cleanly. So there are tools in Lulu's kit to deal with the jacks. The real question is, who do they put as a late game champion? Do they want to run another Kale mid to maybe try and control him in a super late game? Uh, because the, the longer this game goes, the more likely Jax is to become unstoppable and be this just super immense side split pushing monster. Well, they're changing at the moment. They had Twitch highlighted for a long period of time, worked very well in the last game for Tamps, despite the fact he was a long way behind in farm, but he may be falling back to a ever present champion in his pool, which is Caitlyn. It's a champion he played consistently when he was on the Lemon Dogs and has continued to do that on Alliance. It looks like he will get locked in once again for Nif. It's going to be Nami. Yeah, again, surprising. It's it's one of his lesser played champions. Uh, this split, at least, he's been focusing on Lucian, but Lucian has been landing in the hands of Fnatic all three games in a row now. The one thing I do like is this is a lot of ranged, uh, long range spell poke. Uh, with Nami, with a bubble, as well as the Pult of a Peacemaker, you can defend under towers. There's also a lot of on-hit damage. If you combine the headshots of Caitlyn plus the uh, Tidecaller's Blessing from Nami, you've got an on-hit slow that allows you to land multiple auto attacks. So Alliance, if they're in a 2v2, they're in a good position already. That's a strong lane. If they want to do lane swaps and they want to tower push and do fast rotations, they also have that option available to them. So a lot of tools that Alliance can play with. Remember, at the moment, we're just waiting. All oh, the champions getting locked in very quickly. Nocturne getting picked up here by Cyanide. This is a champion he's played so heavily, but barely had a chance to show it. If you look at his solo queue play, he spams this champion non-stop. This is all he plays heavily at the moment. And he finally, he played it at Kanavitsa, and they had one loss on it. And he was so <laughs> depressed about it when we were talking to him. Morgana also locked in by Yellowstar. That's a champion he's had great success on. So what I like about the Nocturne lock-in is this is going to be our first real sort of Feral Flare style jungler. So I want to see where the Cyanide is going to pick it up. Part of the reason I do like this lock-in, if you combo the Paranoia with a Wild Growth in a team fight, the backline of Alliance is going to get jumped on. Tabs, even with the protection of a Tidal Wave and playing on Caitlyn, is going to get run down by Nocturne. I want you to cast your mind back a few weeks ago to the uh, Nocturne being played by Meteos. He was able to actually solo. This is a Fizz Ooh. for Froggen. So, Assassin on Froggen is super exciting because you're going to have Jax, Kha'Zix, and Fizz diving onto Fnatic's backline. One of the best things to deal with a long-range poke composition like a, a, a Nidalee and a Lulu who's going to be throwing Glitter Lancers at you is hard engage. So, if Fnatic are ever grouped up tightly enough, Alliance are going to jump in, and I'm terrified of this jump-in comp from Alliance. It's somewhat reminiscent of the playstyle Wolves beat them with yesterday. On the same token, if Alliance fall behind, there is so much poke and uh, long range damage from Fnatic, they can prevent Alliance from ever jumping in because they can just 
pound them down from early on. So the early stage of this game is going to be so, so crucial for both teams. Remember, guys, if you are watching, remember to tweet us who you think will win. Remember to tweet at LLL Esports. That's important. That has to be in there. And then use the hashtag AllWin or hashtag FNCWin. That's what we want to know. Do you think it's going to be Fnatic or do you think it's going to be Alliance? Quite simple. You put your money in the bag, and what do you think? You know what? I think, I think the momentum is with Alliance. I think uh, Alliance have got a comp that, if, if they engage correctly, will shut down everything that Fnatic can do. But the risk is they cannot fall behind early. If uh, Fnatic manage to pick up some early towers and rotate around and make um, Alliance begin defending, they are relying entirely on Caitlyn to defend a siege. There is no other safe wave clear, really, from the rest of the team. So when you're sitting on the back foot and you've got Dark Bindings and Nidalee Spears and Dusk Bringers and Glitter Lancers, there is too much to dodge. You will get hit by something and you will give up another tower. So that is the key. The opening 7 to 12 minutes. If Alliance are not super far behind, I think they've got the comp that can win this. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting into the game. It is game three of the semi-finals. Fnatic versus Align. All square, 1-1. One, one. Winner takes all, moves in towards that championship match. Loser, well, they're in a third, fourth matchup that nobody wants to play in. It is Fnatic as the blue team and Alliance as the red team. And well, Alliance has started off so, so well in the opening games. Can they do it again? Because if they fall behind this Pokemon, it is danger times for Alliance. So, game one, Alliance were the ones that had some for form of aggressive invade at level one. Uh, it didn't give them anything because Fnatic stole buffs. Game two, it was Fnatic that went for a delayed invade and they were jumping into Alliance's face. So the votes are in, and you guys are a little bit unsure right now. You had a big vote for Fnatic, but it's only 57% of you thinking Fnatic can take this one. That's a bit of a difference to the 73% of you at the start. Yeah, the uh, LOL Esports vote has been balanced out at this point in time. And again, if you just look at the way the series has gone, I think that is much more fair. Uh, we are in the deciding game, of course, so it is, it is very smart, and I think Alliance will be quite happy to look for this lane swap. It does look like they want their AD carry in the top lane, and it does also look like they're going for a little bit of an invade. So they're uh, replicating what Fnatic did in the previous game. Yeah, they are delaying on that blue invade. We'll see whether Fnatic do counter this one. They haven't got a ward in the river area, but it won't spot them if they sneak around there. And that is interesting stuff. Yellow Star is up here, though. It's going to maybe use his Trinket Ward, but that won't be up till two minute mark, and Alliance will be in his face. He will see them coming, though. He's in that bush. He should be able to get out safe, unless he gets caught by one of those Aqua Prisons from Nif, who's winding it up there. The Spear instead will catch Shook out. Yeah, not a lot of damage, but there are three members. Even with the Dark Binding, I think this is just running interference. The fact that Alliance has been denied the buff on an invade immediately gives advantage to Fnatic. They've defended the jungle. It's going to allow Sinai to get into a, a pretty good position. But for, oh, that's oh, great. Oh, very nicely done there. Teleport interrupted. Whimsy being used by Soaz there. He says, see ya, on down to the bottom. <laughs> I'm getting the farm. And he knows he's got himself a clean wave to push against Wicked. Yes, a very good start to the beginning. Fnatic defend their jungle. They interrupt Wicked's teleport. They're going to deny him experience and a little bit of gold for that first level. That is very, very important for Lulu, who has some tools to deal with the Jax, but I by no means feel that it's a counter to Jax. So there is always going to be some pressure and some onus on Fnatic to, to control uh, Wicked, because the moment Wicked does hit that Blade of the Ruin King Trinity Force level of power, I think there's nobody in Fnatic squad that can deal with him 1v1. And that's going to allow Alliance to do what Fnatic tried to do in the previous game. Put pressure elsewhere on the map, try to get more towers, and try to get more objectives. Leap Strike being used by Wicked there, but missing that CS. He's still only got 1 to 13 of Soaz. We're also seeing we're not going to have the lane push craziness that we've seen in the last two games. The last bunch of games, honestly, in this playoff period, where Fnatic are defending this time in that 2v2 in the top lane. Yeah, and I think uh, whoever gets the first tower will be able to rotate and get more map control. Fnatic want this sooner than Alliance do. I think the longer this game goes, the more I like the engaged power of the Kha'Zix, Fizz, and Jax, because they will get to somebody. But you can't discount the fact that if Alliance ever engage inappropriately or at the wrong time, the Nocturne plus Lulu combo 
should be able to zone out and deal with members of Alliance. So we'll need to see uh, who, who picks the better fights and who executes those fights more effectively. So at the moment, Cyanide double buffed up, as is Shook. Both coming towards the rates, actually. Shook simply always going to try and come around the backside of Peke. Peke unaware of this one, actually very deep in there. Froggen goes in, tries to catch on towards him. The lead comes in. Only voice spikes didn't manage to get his claws out this time. Couldn't taste the fear. Flash burned. So this time around, Fnatic, they've got that heal on Peke. So he's got his own built-in heal, thanks to playing Nidalee, as well as summon a spell. Double exhausts from Reckless and Yellow Star. And I'm just looking down the rest of the list. There is actually an Ignite on the side of Froggen. So only Ignite that we've got in the game right now. A lot of exhausts on the side of Fnatic. We've seen how effective those exhausts are against Assassins in the previous game. I keep talking about late game because I, I feel like both of these teams are going to go late. Froggen is just looking for some poke. But until he can 100 to 0 Peke, Peke is just going to heal himself back up, so it's a bit of a half-hearted attempt. It burns his mana down it and it keeps on towards him. There's the Ignite being used this time around. Look at that. Froggen as Cyanide, sorry, forced to come in and counter him. And Peke, he's got next to no mana now. He's going to try and desperately get some of this farm. Yeah, Peke, no flash. He does still have summoner heal available and he hasn't backed yet. So well played by Froggen. Uh, dealt more damage than even I was anticipating. And uh, Peke just under a little bit of trouble. He can't, he can't run the risk of getting 100 to 0. The moment Fizz is able to do that, he's going to be able to just side push and, and go to the side lanes and really put a lot of pressure elsewhere on the map. And, you know, Froggen picking up that Crystalline Flask played it exactly how you should against Nidalee. We've seen it a couple of times where players don't bring that Crystalline Flask up against Nidalee. He's going to get poke, 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 especially as a melee champion. Wicked taking some big damage from Soez there. And he's caught up very well, though, when you consider the advantage that Soaz had in this lane. Yeah, so about a minute of uncontested farming, maybe a little less than that, but also the fact that he's a melee champion against ranged. Wicked's doing fairly well at CSing under the tower. He's got vision of the tribush, so even if Cyanide wanted to come in, he would have had some time to think about it. You never really want to tower dive a Jax unless you you can instantly blow him up. Because of the Counter-Strike blocking auto attacks and the fact that it will stun you when you're in range, it just makes it so, so risky to execute that play. I think it was smart call for Cyanide to back away was spotted out early. Shook was heading down there in the game, looking to maybe try and pounce onto Peke in that mid lane. He's already forced him to burn that flash. Chum the Waters is available. Not hit level six yet. So he's going to get Chum the Waters, catch on towards him. Frogger goes in. Shook pounces in there. The tower damage is on Shook, but it's easy blood for Shook there, taking him down. No problem without that. Very well executed by both Froggen and Shook. They landed everything that they needed to. The moment Froggen hit level six, he instantly took advantage of it. What's even more impressive is that Shook had roamed around the moment that it happened. That, that gank had been set up a little bit beforehand. Froggen or Shook would have communicated talking about the levels, talking about Chum the Waters being available, and they synced that up exquisitely. It appears to have been going on so long, I'm starting to miss words out here in my pronunciation. Tab's caught out with a very good Dark Binding there. Reckless doesn't manage to try and counter on it. We'll keep that farm going. And this top lane pairing is staying very even. Bottom lane pairing. Well, Wicked is backing away. He's going to have to buy here. He's managed to push a wave up. But Soaz is going to keep that advantage in his top lane. He's going to be around about 20 CS ahead of Wicked by the time he's done here. And he's freezing the lane. At Dark Binding's land, they caught Tabs. And caught him out. They're going to use the exhaust with the Aqua Prison. Turns it back around on towards Reckless. Damage still continuing to come down on Tabs, but he's safe for now. I was just about to say, oh, now Pick has been jumped on. In that top lane, as long as Tabs and Nif don't get caught by a Dark Binding, I think they outrange both Reckless and Yellow Star. And thanks to the damage amplification that you get from Nami, I think that Tabs has the ability to keep Reckless and Yellow Star poked down. There is a higher burst on Reckless and Yellow Star's side though. So the moment anyone gets caught out, Lucian and Morgana is just going to melt a big chunk of your HP thanks to the uh, burstier damage of Reckless's Lucian. So at the moment, it's Fnatic that are pushing his top wave in. Mid lane, advantage, frog, and no doubt about that one. Bot lane, well, top lane pairing, whatever you'd like to call them. The two soloers is very much in favor of Soaz up against Wicked. He's almost 30 CS advantage ahead of him now. Wicked has yet to go back and pick up his main item. He's just hanging on in there right now. Having to use that counter strike, and there's still some serious damage coming out from Soaz. Every single time we see this lane, you'll see that Soaz is using his full complement of abilities to keep Jack shut down. Because of everything in Lulu's kit, 
it's a counter to some degree against what Jax wants to be doing. So Soez has done a great job at not only denying Wicked farm, he's also got this tower incredibly low. So Wicked stuck around for the experience, he's even being denied recalling right now. The problem for me though, is I don't know if it's enough. I don't know if they've shut Wicked down enough to really delay the threat that Jax is eventually going to become. Yellow Star coming around. Shook was the danger in the mid lane. Peke aware of his situation there. With this blue buff, he's going to be a much safer farming. He's already got the chalice on him as well, so that mana is not such a problem now. He can keep himself topped off with that heal, but you can see he's having to take the wraiths away from Cyanide, who himself is like, no, I'm building my Feral Flare. Get off the big one. Yeah, I want to touch on it. Uh, nine minutes in, he's got his Riggles Lantern. He's already built up 15 stacks towards that Feral Flare. It does count from the moment you pick up that Hunter's Machete. So Cyanide's on pretty good track. I think the, the shortest amount of time I've seen for Feral Flare is around 12 minutes, 12 to 14 minutes in that bracket. So uh, for the time being, we do see Cyanide in a pretty good position. I want to know how he itemizes and how he builds. When Meteos gets ahead on Nocturne, he builds full damage. He goes Ghost Blade, he goes quite aggressive. And we'll see if it works out. Shook trying to move in lane now to jump on Soaz, but Whimsy's just too powerful and Soaz is a mile and a half away. May have to be careful here. If he goes aggressive once again, Wicked will have that leap strike back or cooldown in his second. And Sowers is playing this one very cautiously, realizing that Wicked, he's being aggressive, so he knows, yep, Ward goes down, Shook gets spotted. Yeah, not going to work out. Uh, a little too hesitant, but I think Sowers was playing that quite safe. He, he never really felt like he was about to get jumped on. Uh, was sat deep enough down the lane. With Cyanide sitting out of vision range, the strength of Paranoia will give them uh, some chance to jump in, but I don't know if it's enough damage. I don't know if it's They caught tabs again. Dark Binding once again with the exhaust. Kriniff tries to counter this one. He's going to get caught out, stunned up here. Tabs in all sorts of trouble. Reckless goes on towards him. Tabs will go down. Now can they get on towards Niff? Dark Binding back up on cooldown. Brilliantly done. The Colin just wrecking from Reckless. A double kill from Reckless and Yellow Star. Both times secured thanks to a Dark Binding from Yellow Star. Even though Niff landed the Aqua Prison on Reckless at the very first binding. It was not enough time. Reckless flashes in, burst down tabs, and just very, very good play. Fnatic now on the invade. We talked about how diving uh, a Jax is risky, but when you've got three members and a heal, the risk becomes a lot simpler, and the spear's landed. When the spear lands, the fear is going to get caught out. Luckily, the minion wave was there for Wicked to leap strike too, though. So gets out free. It's 2-1 currently for Fnatic, but that's the first tower going down, and it's Fnatic to take it. Now, this is what Fnatic wanted to have in their situation. They've already got some kills in the name. They've generated a 2,000 gold lead, thanks to a great CS advantage for Soaz, and because they've kept Wicked down. Even more importantly, the two kills that the team has secured is sitting on their AD carry reckless. So we've seen how effective he was at kiting and, and putting the damage out in both of the games this series. If Fnatic can keep snowballing this advantage of getting more objectives like this mid tower, their poke composition will work very well. Look for a dark binding. If it lands, they may even want to go in. Cyanide getting that nerf thrown out to him. It's not so much an nerf, more of a, a gigantic shark this time around because uh, it depends on the champion skin it's an atlantean shark atlantean this is the one you wanted you had to fight for this one but lost and you lost i lost, you lost for worst, it worst fizz eu i'm afraid yeah. so tower secured for Fnatic in the top lane soez is able to respond and defend the top tower alliance three thousand gold down i think you somewhat expect it because of their their champs need some time to scale but they can't afford to fall further behind. Look for a Dark Binding. If it lands, Tabs could die again. Tabs has already used the 90 caliber net. He's going to have to flash away from this one. The Aqua Prison comes out, but there is the Dark Binding. Wild Growth being used by Sowers. The ultimate from Yellowstar will lock him down and pick up the kill. Tabs goes down again. Yellowstar fired the Dark Binding a millisecond before the bubble landed. Now Wicked's in trouble. He's going to get dived by two members of Fnatic. He's got nowhere to go on this one. The stun is going to come through. He will manage to stun. Has to use a ward, but he's going to get exhausted down. Reckless is looking to pick up his third kill of the game. Where you're gonna go, Wicked? He's running, he's trying to juke, but Cyanide gets the kill. And Fnatic just extend this lead further and further. Wicked was trying to get damage on the tower, and because he was overextended, gets run down. Paranoia wasn't even needed in that situation. Nif not landing a bubble this time around, but again, I just want to go back to that initial uh, Dark Binding. Just worked so incredibly well for Yellowstar. Well, we were unsure how it would work out for Wicked on this Jax. Jax is a very strong champion, and if the game goes longer, then it will become a problem. But from the word go, Soaz has really 
put the pressure on towards him, kept him guessing, kept him out of the lane phase, and kept him well away from farm. You can see it's a 40 CS difference between Soaz and Wicked right now. And well, we talked about it with this Nidalee. If you start getting the advantage, you can start putting the pressure on the towers. It is a huge, huge difference for Fnatic. And with a, what, 4,000 gold lead, 14 minutes into this game, it is playing very much into their hands. Yeah, and this is what Fnatic wanted and what they needed, uh, to, to be frank. Because they, they, they can't run the risk of being assassinated, we'll see if Froggen can jump on Reckless. They're gonna dive him. They're gonna dive in, the Counter-Strike comes in, they catch on towards him. So Froggen pounces in there, Wild Growth comes out, Reckless is in trouble. He's gonna get dropped down, or is he? He tries to get away from it, he's just gonna kite them round. But now Soaz, he can clean up, Wicked take it to nothing. They both pounce towards him, Soaz gets one, gets another. Ooh. Oh, Playful Trickster away from the shield, but the spear comes through, Wild Growth comes in. There's the spear from Peke, and it's a two for one to Fnatic. Two for one, and Froggen fired that Chum the Waters a little bit prematurely. There's a Paranoia available from Cyanide, so if he wants to go, he's jumped on Nymph! He's diving on towards that support, he's also into trouble, and quickly uses that shield to block away. Aqua Prison comes javelin. down! Nymph is gonna try and get away, the Javelin comes in once again, and Peggy gets himself another. Now if Fnatic can keep the pressure on, use the gold and the item advantage that they have accrued for themselves to siege under the towers, Alliance will be forced to engage over and over, because Alliance do not necessarily necessarily have the damage to win an extended team fight with multiple members. The wild growth from Lulu and the black shield from Yellow Star are going to be so important at saving a team member and buying them the time they need to kill members of Alliance. So Alliance are looking for engages right now. They're looking for moments to claw back this gold. And if they do, if they perform like they did against the Wolves, they, they overcommitted when they were behind. They picked slightly inferior times to engage, and they can't run that risk now because they're already 6k gold down. The blue buff was also stolen away by Cyanide there, Frog, and not going to be getting that one again. They're starving him of that buff all throughout this series, and so far it has been working wonders for Fnatic. It's now a 5,000 gold advantage when them five kills up, three to zero in turrets. Alliance, so far, yet to get even close to one of these turrets. Yeah, haven't touched them at all. There's one buff away from Cyanide completing his Feral Flare. It's not going to be on the blue buff. The next kill, assist, or large camp. Maybe if he goes for the white. Besides, he doesn't want to start stacking yet. He just realized it. Now, when the Feral Flare is, is upgraded, it will be dealing an additional 100 damage on each auto attack to minions and monsters, and will be healing for 10. And for every... A uh, large monster it, it you kill or, or kill or assist you pick up, that will increase. It does deal a third of that damage to champions. The reason I talk about that, if Cyanide continues to stack this up and builds up a whole bunch of additional damage, him and Reckless could put themselves in a situation where they can secure Baron as a two-man and the rest of Fnatic with Lulu and Nidalee can be running interference and holding Alliance back thanks to their great long-range poke. The damage from the Spears, not the greatest right now, but there's no death gap completed, there's no nothing outside of the Needlessly Lodge Rod, so Peck is still building himself up. Wicked unable to counter everything Soaz is doing to him right now, and he's on his turret, but Soaz has got the range advantage, just continues to poke on towards him, and you talked about this in Champ Select. Tabs is really the only thing able to try and keep this wave clear away. They have nothing but melee champions, and. Fnatic are taking full advantage of this one. They're keeping those spears continuing to flow. Soaz continuing to keep pressure on the turret. They can't do anything about it. So there is a risk. If Fnatic continue that siege and stay grouped up, that alliance can jump in on them with the Jax, the Kha'Zix, and the Fizz. The, one of the, the added bonuses to having Cyanide playing Nocturne on your team is the moment alliance do jump in, you throw down Paranoia, you deny their vision. Even if you only reduce a portion of that vision, it gives Fnatic the chance to deal with that all-in you know, jump at you comp. So I think that's it's, it's a very smart pickup from Fnatic, from picks and bands. And Fnatic siege their way down, land some spears, they grab their fourth tower of the game, and it. Yeah, so has teleported down to the bottom, you saw it there. He's gonna be clearing that wave out, keeping that tower safe. Dragon, that's gonna go across to Fnatic. You talked about it a moment ago, the combo of Cyanide and Wrecked as well. You can see it in action right here. They're taking the Dragon down with it right now, and all of the turrets so far have been safe, but it looks like Alliance are finally moving to pick up their first turret of the game. It's gonna be Wicked that will take that down, but they've left themselves completely exposed in the bottom lane. Yeah, Fnatic should be able to pick this one up very, very quickly. Tabs is alone, and if he sticks around, he's at risk of being dove. So Fnatic grab their fifth tower of the matchup right now. Just continuing to expand their lead. They've got monumental vision from the top half of the map to the bottom. It's just littered with Fnatic wards. And Fnatic are playing this 
uh, roam, rotate, uh -oh. siege comp well. Somebody's going to die. Nif or Tabs both Dark exposed. Binding. Dark Binding will be the thing that starts it off here. In fact, you know, it could be the Glitterlands from it's Soas. Either way, four members of them. No they're vision. not sure. They're not sure which way to go. It's going to be a flash. They're going to dive on towards Nif. He goes down. He gets caught down. The Dark Binding was not used. They're going to try and counter this one. Wicked jumps in, pounces on towards Reckless, but they just simply don't have the damage anymore. Froggen is going to look to assassinate somebody. He's coming in from the side. This is going to be four and four as uh, Peck is not there. Shook pounces in, avoids that dark binding and gets caught with the Glitter Lance and Froggen counters this one. Peke giving the call back away from it. Dodges out of it though, the spear does not land. Froggen yet to throw the ultimate out because the rest of Fnatic are closing the gap. Yeah, so Froggen doesn't feel that he can instantly blow Peke out. They tried to make something happen. That was actually a super aggressive play from Fnatic. The flash soul shackles from Yellowstar Morgana was the safest of engages because it's guaranteed to land. He put himself in range, he chased down, he was able to uh, put the black shield on himself, which meant no CC, nothing could you know, interrupt him staying in range of Nif. They get the kill, but I think luckily for Alliance, maybe intelligently, they had repositioned quickly enough to defend the inhibitor turret from being sieged. So at the end of the day, uh, giving up only one kill but holding on to their towers, crucially important for Alliance right now. It is a big advantage for Fnatic, though. There are 7,000 gold in the lead. Sawaz in this top lane has been wrecking Wicked, but now he has to be a little bit more careful. Shook is just off at the side. Oh, Reckless is going to face check straight in towards there. Uses the pink ward wisely to make sure Shook is away. And Shook does not fancy that. This combo is deadly. There's a lot of damage from Fnatic. And with this big advantage in gold, it gives them a big item advantage as well. You can see Reckless at the moment, a clear Phantom Dancer ahead of Taps. Yeah, that is really, really big lead. And when you see the rest of Fnatic grouping up in this inner turret, they are just going to keep playing the sneak game. Shook cannot afford eating those javelins. He's poked down and poked down. Fnatic, they secure another tower. This was the pitfall of Alliance's comp. If they fell behind, it was always going to be next to impossible to defend. And their only uh, safe wave clear is in the hands of Tabs. He was pushing the bottom tower, so he's not even here to respond. Wicked is just going to eat himself spears and off the spear and fanatic. If they stick around for another wave or two, they can probably get this inhibitor turret. Yeah, they just shredded over the half the hit points off that turret. Wicked so close to catching a full binding there. Alliance are ready to try and go for this one. Froggen laying in wait. Has the ultimate and ignite. Oh, but Wicked takes our spear. He's going to have to back to the fountain. Yeah, you know, Fnatic, they've just played this comp so well. Uh, from the moment they grabbed the, the first couple of kills, they've focused the towers, they've not waited. That's the most important thing. This is what Wolves didn't do yesterday. Alliance have started a fight. They're going for it. Cyanide's going to be the focus target, but that Dark Shield comes straight out. They're going to be Wicked jumps in, counter strikes all four members, but he is just left alone. And Fnatic turned straight on him. Froggen has to get out of there. His Tabs gets captured as a spear. That's going to be an inhibitor going down inside 22 minutes. There is not enough damage on multiple members of Alliance to deal with super minions this early in the game it's going to take such a long investment of time that Fnatic are going to be able to siege up the rest of the map get more objectives like dragons reds blues you know tabs if you look at itemization he's a phantom dancer down the makings of a lost whisper and he's opted to go for another bf sword and i think it's because of wave player i think he's gone for the bf sword because he needs to melt these minions as quickly as he can because he is the anti-siege champion. And the moment he takes any poke at all from Fnatic, that's it. The defense is off and Alliance either needs to all in or back away. They're trying to delay it as long as they can. Tabs desperately pushing out that entire mid wave. He knows he's safe for now. Alliance moving around. Is this going to be a desperation baron? It is a desperation baron if they're going to stop. The, the, the reason it's so risky is Peke can Solo defend this. If he lands two spears uh, on, a, oh. on a champion, they're going to die. They've, they've tried to set up a cheeky comp in the back there. Oh, but they're all getting caught out here. They're going to try and turn. They're going to rush on towards Peke. They jump in there. Wicked does manage to land the stun. Yellow Star gets dropped straight away. Peke is going to be the next focus target. He's going to ace in the hole. He's going to land on him. And now they're in a 4v5 situation. But Fnatic, they're turning and running to the base. Yeah, there are super minions pushing towards that top lane. So Fnatic can keep a lines in place long enough they can let the super minions do the rest of the damage. What I liked about Alliance is they were playing the bait game. They actually never intended to go for Baron. They just wanted to jump on whoever came to defend. 
Oh, so close. But Frog and Nipple back away. And uh -oh. I think now Tabs is in trouble. Tabs is dead. I think I don't think he's gonna get out of this one. Wims is available. The speed already been used. Wild Growth does not land. The rest of the team try and counter in towards it. Tabs just about surviving by the support of the rest of his team. But it is gonna be the middle inhibitor turret going down. Spears continuing to fly. Frog and Hammond to play for Trickster away. And it's another inhib down for Fnatic. Incredible play from Fnatic. They deal with the Baron bait. Even though they lose Yellow Star in the engage, they're able to rotate to the mid lane, grab themselves another inhibitor, and now thanks to super minions in the top and the middle lane, they now have free reign on this Baron. And if Alliance wants to get anywhere near it, they have to get through that onslaught of long range skill shots. They're not even gonna be here quickly enough, I don't think. Maybe, maybe Shook just as it's going down, but if he eats a spear or a binding, that's it, he's finished. Yellow Star ready and waiting to fire the binding, and he lands with the spear and the Colin. Shook in trouble. The heal from Nif just enough. He's going to try and pounce in, but he gets caught by the spear. And now the paranoia comes out. Wicked going to get jumped on the fear. Will send him away from the Fnatic team. Aqua Prison just enough to keep him up. bay. Wicked going to get caught out with a slow. Fnatic closing him down. Leap strikes to Froggen. He's trying to run away from this one. There's the ultimate coming out from Froggen. Wicked goes down. Fnatic are just rushing through in the Alliance base. That was such smart play the shield landing onto cyanide allow the glitter lance to slow wicked down and thanks to the extended chase fanatic are on the nexus toast they've caught tabs this is them going to the final tabs drop down fanatic looking strong in game three and honestly did not look like they were ever going to lose this game the moment alliance fell behind at the start fanatic have looked incredible and they really know how to take advantage of a situation like that. Fnatic are in the final. Who will they face? That's the question. SK Gaming or Rocket, they will be playing next. Such a difficult position for Alliance. They lost a ban. If you look at the series, Nidalee was a red side ban. Game one was a game, uh, red side ban game two. Nidalee was not banned in game three. First picked by Peke and he landed all of those spears perfectly. I think that was very, very good play from the side of Fnatic. They used their Siege Comp well, and they they never gave Alliance a chance to engage them. Well, I have to say, so far, every higher seed has won their match. Gambit, they went down to Rocket, who were placed fourth. Fnatic have just beaten Alliance, who were placed third, who themselves beat sixth place. Is that an omen? Will it be SK in the final against Fnatic? It's going to be a big match regardless, but Fnatic have shown three separate tactics in this best of three already. They have so many different tactic styles in their bag. We didn't even see them using the, the run and ganks tactic. No, they didn't need to. You know, I think when you when you look at Fnatic's playstyle over this series, they demonstrated a, a an ability to rotate very well. Even in even in the game they lost to Alliance in, in, in game two, it was actually about Fnatic. They had the first few towers very early on, and then Alliance built themselves back up. Then Alliance were able to control and maintain uh, Fnatic in their control. Game one and game three, it was all about Fnatic. They got a lead, they never let it go. And that was, that was great, 25 minutes to get the Nexus down. There was no hesitation. They had the Siege champions and they sieged. You're not seeing things there, by the way. That was Aranea. He's kind of become the manager, boot boy, team comp guy for Fnatic. Cheerleader. He's always been with Fnatic. He's always been the Fnatic cheerleader. He's yes. big buddies with Perke. But I actually saw him backstage when the tactic talks were going on and he was giving input. Uh, I think why not? If you, if you have friends and allies who can talk to you in a semi-final, mm. when you're qualifying for, the, for another final, three finals out of three in the European LCS and Fnatic is represented. They won spring last year. They won summer last year. They're looking to do it again. And I know they surprised me this series. I did not expect that level of play from them, considering what we'd seen uh, week 11 of the LCS, considering what we'd seen building up to the end of the LCS. I did not anticipate that, and it was very, very well played. And I, and I want to highlight the fact that if Fnatic were to get that to All-Stars, we would have all three world champions at All-Stars. We would have Fnatic, if they win, of course. If it's they a win. big if. Tomorrow, they were the Season 1 World Champions. The Taipei Assassins are already there. They were the Season 2 World Champions. And SK Telecom T1K are there. They were the Season 3 World Champions. It could be an epic All-Stars if they make it. It's going to be an epic nevertheless, but yes. to have all three World that Champions would be fantastic. That is another whole very poetic 
uh, storyline, when you look at the, the, the grand scheme of things, the All-Star Invitational, all the regions having their teams uh, working towards it. We'll know who Europe's representative is tomorrow, and we'll know who North America's uh, representative is on the weekend. We've got a lot of games to go before we get there, though, ladies yes. and gentlemen. So, Alliance are going to go through to the third, fourth place match, but they did look good. They looked better. Yes. That's what I'm going to say. I would say I was uh, left wanting yesterday. Mm. When, they, when they played against the Wolves, Wolves in game one looked phenomenal. But then Wolves mid to late game decision making. Wolves were unable to just turn it on and win the game like Fnatic did in this third game. When Fnatic got a lead, they just snowballed it and grabbed so much more. Fnatic really, really impressed me this series. They came out, they had new champion picks, they had a newfound rotation and objective play. And they deserve to be in the final because they did outplay lines. Well, it was a fantastic matchup, ladies and gentlemen. There's still two best of threes to go, so there's a lot of League of Legends action to continue. But for now, let's check in with Fnatic, Soaz, and Peke, who are standing by with shocks. Thank you very much, D-Man. Indeed, Fnatic bound for a third consecutive final after a split. And, um, well, so as first of all, the Soraka top, it's something that we know people play, but to bring it out here and then the entire comp built around it, tell us about your plan. Um, I, I was searching for a pick against Reis, like to, uh, to with Yorick, and I just tried uh, Soraka in scrims, and I played like twice or three times, and it went pretty well, and we just built uh, like a team comp around, mostly Reckless plus, plus Cyanide, and yeah. Yeah, that game was pretty straightforward uh, for you guys. And then going into game two, Picky, you went on that Z and tried to split push, but it didn't really work out that well. T tell us about the game. Yeah, the, I didn't play that much that lately, so my mindset of just split pushing and not give a F about the team is not the same. So I was all the, try, all the time, I pushed the lane and I tried to go back to team fight, but it doesn't really work, especially with our setup, like the under setup. They have so many exhausts, it was really hard to team fight. I think if I use a split push, even if we lose two reds, we take two reds and it would have been a better trade and probably we could have done something much better than that. How was that second game from your perspective? Because you did very good on Lulu in both games, and in that second game, you actually always had to default to coming down to save someone. Me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think on the second game, they had a better pick, I would say. We, we had to avoid the team fight, but at the same time, you cannot like, avoid every single team fight. So um, we just did some misplay, and we lost the game because we did, they did better fight than us. And yeah, on, the, on the third game, it, it went way better. Yeah, they obviously lost the band, so that opened up a, a little bit for you guys in Pink Skin Bands, and then the Needly was open, you went straight for it, but that did mean that they got Jax and Kha'Zix, so how did you react to those picks from them? Well, I think we wanted them to ban Needly, actually, so we were really pissed that we had to, to pick her. Not pissed, but it's an annoying champion because uh, it's hard to play against, and if something goes bad early, it's really hard to play with her as well, especially versus them, because they like to come mid and do anything to get fed on Frogan. So, yeah, it's really annoying, but well, it's still Nidali, I think it's better than Cathy, it's better than, than Jackson, especially if, if no one does uh, many mistakes when it, it comes to mid-game, there's nothing they can do, so. What about you in that last game? Because that Lulu was absolutely frightening. Um, we wanted to cover our blue as four, and actually they, they could cover our blue as three. They, don't, they didn't even need me, but we had the award, and we saw Jack's TP, and I just like W him to, I didn't pick the, any skill yet, so I just picked W to, to cancel him and then TP bottom, and it gave me a lot of advantage since I could push, go back, take one more item and just like bully him on lane. So as mentioned before, you guys, of course, the spring split champions last season, the summer split champions last season, back in the final. How big is the hunger to do it again and how possible is it? I, I honestly think this was probably the hardest match we will have this series, so that is, I think we're really confident, at least I am really confident that we can take it, like, really we can, we have high chances. So Soaz, SK or Rocket, and will you do it? SK or, I would say SK, even though Rocket performed really good against Gambit, but I would say SK against them. All right, well, we'll see tomorrow, it's going to be a great final no matter what. Uh, we're going to take a short break and then it's time for SK Gaming and Rocket to begin the second semi-final, best of three, where the winner will face Fnatic in tomorrow's championship match. Don't miss it, we'll be right back. Peace.